Hey traders, welcome back to Trade Talk. It is episode 46 now, so we're approaching the 52 week, uh, you know, mark. And kind of welcome back, Sunday, Sunday Trade Talk. We are on Sunday. It's this uh, holy day for upon uh, looking at trading. It is. A bit of reflection upon that, and I would also, yeah, I appreciate. Don't forget the risk disclaimer. Yes. Yes, that's a really, thank you. All right, so guys, we've got the charts up and actually Connor and I are both trading uh, small live accounts now as well. So this is very pressing that the advice we give and when we talk about potential trade setups and the trades we're in, we're not offering financial advice and saying you should also follow what we're doing. So this is educational, entertaining, and it's more a learning process and we're sharing that here on YouTube. So please be careful when you're trading. Don't follow our alerts or what we're talking about. Just learn what makes sense to you. Um, and a suggestion would probably be, you know, Google search Walter Peters. He's got a good forum. That's where Connor and I both sort of learn our ways and, and sort of refine things a bit. Be very careful and don't risk more money than you, you're willing or able to lose. So you have to be able to pay your bills first and then trade. No, making money from trading to pay your essential sort of, expenses all right so um yes kind of yeah it is sunday we're on the holy day and we're doing trade talk so i've got your new zealand dollar trade up here and why don't you just tell the viewers when will the stop loss be moved again what sort of a, a price target for you it would so it would just have to be another uh dip a, a higher low and then a higher yep. high would go up yeah and then that's what I, that's what i'd do uh yep. And so that just comes down to, you know, a bit of discretion with my stop loss. Yeah. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Which is, you know, I, I sort of like, that's what I like. Um, yeah, that's, that's all I've got to say about that, really. Yeah, and look, um, for the people who have been monitoring the trade, so that's where I kind of got in at 7190. I got in at 7205. Um, my method's a little bit different. I sort of... Uh, I probably got in a little bit late, but th there's still a lot of room to go for this one. There is a little bit of resistance here at 73,119, it looks like. That's what I've sort of drawn in on my charts as well. So for the people, you know, looking for a potential entry, I would say you've got to be a little bit wary. Um, if it could pull back on Monday, which would be a good sign for a trend continuation because typically what happens on Monday is the opposite of what happens during the rest of the week. But... This one is certainly still uh, pretty bullish. All right, so we've covered that one. Uh, all right, so guys, we show our winning trades, we show our losing trades. We've got, this is a good example of um, things just turning very quickly. So we've got the pound, Aussie dollar, and this one here. Was this a, a Thursday or a Friday trade for you, Connor? Oh, that's a good question. Scott, I think it was a Thursday. It looks it like, Thursday. yeah, it does look like, like yeah. a later in the evening Thursday trade. Yeah, and as you can see, it just took it out of the box. It went down a bit, and then it was all taking that gamble of it going through that support yep. or, uh, zone, and it, it didn't happen. It's bounced back up, and you've just got to you've got to take those on the chin. Uh, in my back testing, it's that uh, I have a, a record of about fifty percent on this one. Yeah. On this, uh, yep box trade method, so I wasn't surprised by any stretch of the imagination that I was stopped out. Mm. Uh, that's just, you know, you got to, you got to roll with the punches. Yeah, that's right, guys. So when Connor's talking about his back testing, it's important to understand you got to follow the same method, and it's so important with the back testing. It lets you know what to expect. So if you get around a 50% win rate, these things just happen, you know, and that's just the market doing what it does. So that's a, a good example of just applying what you've learned in your back testing to to the live trading. Now, the Euro Swissy, a great lesson in patience here as well. So you've moved the stop loss on this one as well? Yes. So I've moved around the 1.165 mark. Yep. Around about there, which is break even for me. Um, and it's finally sort of looked like it's got the trend continuing after a lot of sideways uh, motion and there was almost that squeeze play going through the yeah. sort of triangle breakout. And, uh, it's going up, it so is. it keeps going up because there's no support up until so we're at about one 
point one eight zero two five, yep. and I my next line in at one two uh, one point two oh seven eight six. So if you can get up to there, that'd be great. But you know you can't you can't uh, predict these markets. You can just manage the risk and manage your trade. I mean. I, I agree, and you were saying you've been in this trade for over 50 days, so it's a good example. 50 seven days I've been in, yeah. So it's important to know, guys, that uh, you just trade the system and you don't cut it you know, too early because things take time in Forex sometimes, especially in the higher time frames as well. So it's important to be, you know, be patient. All right, so we've got that one. Now, in... Uh, talking about the euro, the euro US dollar is is looking pretty good as well. I might bring that yeah. up quickly um, because it's it is interesting. I mean, even on the daily, it's very big uh, bullish candle printed to end the day uh, on the Friday. So that's quite interesting. I mean, it's not. It's kind of a messy trend, isn't it? But yeah, it looks like I'm on the yeah. weekly now, and it it is. Yeah. I mean, the. Uh, is there a potential trade setup? You know, I mean, I, I've got resistance in one, two, four, eight, nine region. So there's a little bit of space there if I zoom in. I mean, that candle on the weekly is not too bad. It sort of popped out of a little bit of consolidation there. But I yeah. think also where, if we're talking major pairs here, I'll go, I think the pick of the bunch, we were talking before we started filming the, uh, the pound US dollar is something really... I mean, do, do you... See a box trade there, or is it already a breakout and you're waiting for a retouch? I was, look, I was looking at the box, yep. and you can see where there's that little bit of consolidation, and it's and it's broken out. This is on the, the daily, of course. Yeah. Um, but that's not a great box. So you see, uh, I'm not sure if you've got my screenshot up, Scotty, but that yeah, that's a I put a yellow box up. Yep. And yep. It's like if I think that it may be a good box, and then if it's green, um, that's me thinking it is a good box trade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've actually, exactly. yeah, I do. I've got a, I've got a chart up here with with a box drawn in of the pound yeah. a little while ago, and I, it's probably a good example for everyone. So that's what a good sort of, it's a very close cluster of candles, and they're all you know trading in a tight range. This right here, it's not long enough, and it looks like and. That's a crazy candle though on the daily. That's uh, yeah. For but me, if this, this came is... down, if this came down and bounced off the one uh, off the uh, support zone and then went up higher, that could be. That well, could be that's crazy. something I would also be looking for. So on Monday, um, and to the fellow traders, that's what you'd be wanting to look for because you don't just want to buy straight away at the start of Monday because the Asian session and everything and it's very slow. So I would say maybe wait until. Monday is finished and see what things happen and then on the Tuesday things sort of head in the right direction for you know lets you know whether it's going to go up now or if it's going to just go back down again so um, definitely it's it's probably worth keeping an eye on that one that's quite a quite a good one all right anyway guys so um, I'll just go over my trades quickly so I've got the New Zealand dollar in place still as does Connor I got in at 72.05 um, just with a trend continuation thing with the Bollinger Bands. And it's looking not too bad. I've got the four-hour chart up. And it ended, I would say, neutral. I wouldn't say it ended bearish, significantly bearish. I mean, it wasn't bullish, but um, it was interesting. It sort of had a, a pullback and then another little bullish candle printed and then sort of a pseudo-style kangaroo tail to finish the actual session on my chart. So I'm... Uh, you know, there's no real, you know, bad or good from that chart right now for me. So we'll see how that one goes. And I've got the Aussie dollar as well, which actually is over 79 cents, which is interesting. 80 cents is a, is a huge resistance area, though. So if it does take off, um, you know, I think 79.80 is my take profit. So I'll be really carefully monitoring that if it gets close to 80 cents because um, 80 cents for, it seems to be a very big level of uh, selling pressure as well so those are the trades guys um, look what, what would you say Connor about the pound how would you sort of play this in in sort of a little bit more detail for someone watching at home if they're interested in learning the box trade method and everything like that so I don't think a box trade would turn. I mean, maybe a box trade would turn up if it started like 
getting consolidation between the one where the support is at 1.35 yeah, and yep. the resistance is at around that 1.375 yep. or something like that. Yep. Uh, it started bouncing between that a few times tightly and then took off upwards again, not downwards, because downwards, uh, I don't think there's enough conviction to go downwards for this. This looks like yeah. it's more like... Yeah, So... Um, would it be more like a last kiss potentially instead if this just sort of comes back? Yeah, down but and... it's like, yeah, no, actually, I wouldn't take a last kiss. No, it would be like if yeah. we could start consolidating between that range I was speaking about and then took off again. Yeah. And then yep. higher height, I yep. might put below that. Or if it were just to like the next, just say, three candles uh, were to hit uh, the support zone. And then there was a bit, uh, a bullish big shadow and made it high, high. I'd probably take something like that as well. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. So, yeah. Big, don't know, a big shadow is a uh, certain type of specific uh, can candle. What I'll do with the big shadow talk, because you did a video on engulfing candles as well, which is yes. really good. I'll link that in the description section as well, guys, because kind of goes over sort of the like anatomy of you know what an engulfing candle is and everything like that so and as we're talking about videos and trade talk in general i've got the twitter page up here as well so we're over 3800 followers guys so if you haven't already um give it a follow we post a lot of content on the page i'll bring up the profile um of the page as well some funny we you know bitcoin talk there's a lot of videos we share, guys. I especially felt it was. <laughs> this is pretty good. The uh, when crypto traders have to trade through consolidation, and you've got that well, woman. It's consolidation at the moment, crypto. It and is. I thought, you know, a few. I know a few people have jumped on the bandwagon, and they don't know what to do. Do not know. Have any clue what to do. Well, it just it's it's it was always going to happen, and everyone that talks about it going to the moon and everything, it might well do. But this is just the natural flow of things. Like you can't just <laughs> you're right. So a lot of people that would have got in and you know in the nineteen thousands and are still holding, I'm sure you're very frustrated. But I mean, if you are, um, you have to have an investor mindset. So you would have put money, hopefully, that you can lose. And, you know, it's going to be volatile. There probably will be, you know, some more buyer interest soon. But right now it's, like you said, and as that sort of meme sort of highlights, you know, you're going to have to be patient. And <laughs> it's totes fine. That's hilarious. But, yeah, look, Bitcoin is, you know, like you have expressed your opinions on it, Connor. And I think I'm sort of more in agreement with you, honestly. I wouldn't trade it. That's just because I'm conservative in nature. So it's very volatile. Well, the sorry to interrupt. Even as the technicals, I looked at the technicals and there's not a lot of support and resistance really going on. Like there's a little bit for our style of trading. Yeah, yeah. And they, you get up a lot of the different, uh, you get up a lot of the different cryptos and they can't, I can't help to see that they look heavily correlated. A lot of their graphs look the same. Yeah, they are. I don't know. I don't fully understand what is fully, but you correct. Like there is when one goes up a lot, everything else seems to just follow. Like, it's yeah, yeah, of course there's rules, but I was looking at just say it was, uh, and I'm making this off the top. Of my head, it was like Dash and uh, um, Bitcoin, yeah. and I put Dash next to each other, and I'm like, these are so heavily correlated. It's not funny. It's yeah. like if it's like if you short gold, a gold. Like I probably wouldn't short a gold trade and take a long trade on the Aussie USD because they're you know you look at those yeah yeah heavily correlated. That's a good know? trading example. Yeah, I think that's right. And for someone who is um, interested in Bitcoin and has a good understanding, I've got a good friend of mine that actually trades it full time. He wasn't interested on in coming on the channel. Um, you know, he's a bit of a recluse. But if someone is, leave a comment in the the, just in the comment section and just let us know if you'd like maybe because we're definitely open to hearing everyone's yeah. views on it I mean I ideally if you're more invested in it and not just some random that wants to just talk crap that would be because <laughs> there's a lot of those people around really isn't there it's sort of yeah. oh man anyway guys so um I just it's nearly 15 minutes thank you for watching 
And Connor, thanks for joining us, guys. Episode 46, we're signing out. Bye for now. See you, Connor. Bye.